point, um, uh, the Chinese government has detained uh, over 1,000 unregistered Christians in the past year. They've closed what they term illegal meeting points. They've prohibited public worship activities. And additionally, by the way, unregistered, and this is amazing, unregistered Catholic clergy, uh, unregistered with them, they remain in detention. Some have even disappeared. I would ask, would you be open, if you're confirmed, to attending a worship service in an unregistered Catholic or Protestant church within China? Senator, I'm going to do my very best to uh, represent our country um, constructively, seriously, engage and listen in, in a way which I think is most effective. Um, I um, will take actions which I th hope accomplish that objective. And um, with respect to where I go and do not go, um, that's a matter of judgment. And it's one I'm going to be thinking about very carefully about what I, where I go and where I do not go. Um, the goal here is to be effective. A major goal, as we've discussed here today, is the protection of, of human rights. It's probably the bedrock fundamental goal, because <laughs> so much springs from that. <clears throat> and it's a goal that I will espouse fully and use whatever way I can to accomplish that goal effectively. But I, I let me not answer that directly, because I don't know the degree to which that, uh, that makes sense at this point. First of all, I'm not confirmed. <laughs> um, not there. <clears throat> And, um, and this is frankly not a point I discussed the, uh, with with the administration, but I, I I will take that back too. Well, and I and I'm respectful of the of the reality that in order to have the operating space to be effective, uh, you don't want to necessarily be at the di direct and constant conflict with the host government. On the other hand, there comes a point I would argue, Senator, and I hope you keep this in mind, where that effectiveness uh, cannot come at the at the expense of our fundamental. Uh, rights as uh, the fundamental rights of the people of that country and in particular what we stand for as a nation and I would just caution that again as we as you see the Chinese attitude towards some of these issues uh, their attitude basically is mind your own business on these issues if you want to have a good relationship with us you need to stop speaking out on these grotesque human rights violations and I hope it never becomes the policy of the United States to look the other way on these issues for the purpose of uh, achieving a more uh, uh, friendly operating environment, because that, I hope, is not the definition of this new model of major country relations. I think if the Chinese are willing to use their newfound economic and even military abilities to be a productive member of the, of the global uh, community, uh, committing themselves to things like freedom of navigation, respect for human rights, I think that would be an extraordinary development for mankind. If, on the other hand, this newfound power is used to turn their neighbors into tributary states, and to continue to oppress people within their own country, I think we have a big problem and a major, major challenge. And so, again, I, I, would, I know you need to go back with the, to the administration on some of these issues, but I hope this is not a matter of, of debate. I hope that it is clear that we want a good relationship with China, but not at the expense of the fundamental human rights that define us as a nation and as a people. And I think you're going there at a very unique time uh, where, where freedom activists in that country are looking for an advocate and a spokesperson that will stand with them strongly. They look to America to be that. And you have a unique and historical opportunity to do that, and I, and I hope it's one that you'll embrace. But, but thank you for thank your you, willingness. Thank you, I appreciate that very much. Thank you.